Hey everyone, Colin Pauls here. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, a senior three question, the Geneva Confection. So I find this question pretty interesting and uh, not particularly hard for a senior three. Okay, let's uh, read the question and uh, try to solve it. In order to ensure peace and prosperity, prosperity for future generations, the United Nations is creating the world's largest candy. The ingredients must be taken in railway cars from the top of a mountain and poured into the Lake Geneva. The railway system goes steeply from the mountain top down to the lake, with a T-shaped branch in the middle, as shown below. Okay, so you can take a look at the graph. But I will start reading the rest of the question and uh, come back to the graph later. Right now, each of the ingredients uh, is shown in its own railway car. Each railway car is assigned a positive integer from 1 to n. The ingredients must be poured into the lake in order 1, 2, 3 to n. But the railway car can uh, are lined up in some random order. The difficulty Is this downhill to the lake or sideways uh, on the branch line? Is it still possible to pour ingredients into lake in the order 1, 2, 3 to the end? For example, if the car were placed in 2, 3, 1, 4, we can slide this into uh, the lake in the order described below. So if we have 2, 3, 1, 4, uh, this is our that way and uh, oops that's too sick and this is a lake so eventually we are trying to get those railway cars uh, in a ascending order to the lake so it will be like one two three four so how are we gonna do do it in this situation is so we're gonna slide car 4 to the branch so so let me put it here so the rest is 1 3 2 and uh, since the first number we need or the current number needed is 1 so we can just put 1 here so the 1 doesn't matter and uh, it doesn't go to the branch so because our next required number is 3 uh, sorry, two, but you see the number we have in on hand is three, so we have to move three to the branch, and uh, I will leave three four on the branch, and the rest is just two. So because we are needing a two, we just put the two in the lake. So right now it, it is one two in the lake. And three four here, and we can move three to the lake as well, and four eventually. So that's why we can um, pour all the ingredients in order uh, to the lake. And uh, it doesn't particularly happen every time. So sometimes you cannot pour every ingredient to the lake. Uh, for example, here you may have like. Uh, Uh, different ingredient, uh, different uh, lengths of ingredients, and uh, it will just uh, vary at different situation. The result. So, what is the input gonna be? The first line of input contain number from t, uh, which is the number of different test uh, test cases that will run. So the t is or the first input is how many situation. We need to test or we need to calculate. So in this case, uh, sorry, here we are just calculating uh, a situation, and our answer is yes. Yeah, sorry, because if it if it can, and we only need to print yeah or why, and but the input sophistication require it tell us that there probably gonna be more than one test case. Uh, 
but it will be pretty easy to solve with a for loop. We just continue to do our calculation until uh, we run out of test case. And uh, each test case has four uh, form of an integer n. And on the first line of the test, the follow uh followed by a list of the n cards listed from the top of top to bottom. The cards will always use the number from one to n in some order. So let's break down the test case. So here the two means there's two situations. So two situations and um each uh, and on the first line of each situation or each te each test case, uh, it require it tells tell us that uh, how many numbers or how many real way cars is in the scenario. For example, here it is uh, it is four, uh, four cars. It means uh, we can just read the rest four lines, and uh, this is a test case. And after that, we just get a new test case and run the algorithm. So how I plan to solve this question is, whenever, um, whenever that I uh, my current railway car or the most bottom one on the mountain isn't the same as uh, what I need right now. For example, if uh, it is still two, three, one, four. I, I'm needing one, but what if the bottom uh, railway car on the mountain top isn't one? So then I will try to slide it to the branch so I can put, put four here. But uh, there's a restriction is uh, the new railway car to be slide on the branch has to be smaller than the uh, than the other on the branch. So so at the end, we can just uh move the like if uh move the first uh railway car to the lake, and uh, it is impossible to move the railway car behind the branch to the lake. So if it is four and three, then when we are needing three, we cannot actually get three out, and uh, it means we cannot uh. The test case cannot pass, or we're just gonna output no. And uh, when our needing number needed number is um, bigger or smaller than the bottom one on the mountain, then we can just check uh, the top one on the branch. Or the most left one on the branch, maybe it's one two one four, one four eight nine, and then we're just gonna check the, this number, see if this number fits our requirements. Uh, this is actually a bad example, but I hope you get my idea. Okay, let's try to get in IDE and uh, let me explain user code. Okay. Uh. Let's analyze my code, and uh, I just want to briefly mention the key idea of this question. So once we have a required number, we can look for the number both from the branch or from the mountain top. It would better be from mountain top or branch, or we can just move the see if it's possible to move our value on the mountain to the branch. If it if we cannot, then we can just exit the program because it is impossible to move our ingredients to the lake. So let's take a look at my code. I created an integer called test case number. It means uh, the total number of test cases. And uh, an integer called length of each test case. Uh, it is just how many lines of input I'm going to take in for each test case or scenario. I created two vectors, one called branch, one called output. The output will just store all the output data I will output. Well, it's kind of difficult to say it. Okay, so it's just because we have different test case and different test case may have different result. And uh, 
I chose to store them instead of printing them after each calculation. The branch will store data on the branch. So in the main class, I firstly initialize the test case number. So I just know how many test case I'm looking at and uh, a counter variable. So in the while loop, and I just uh, do the calculation to each scenario and uh, record my scenario to the output uh, vector. So at the beginning of each iteration or at the beginning of each calculation, I clear my branch vector so there's nothing on the branch, nothing left behind from my previous like previous uh, data from previous test case. Uh, I input my length of each test case so I know how many lines will I'm inputting and uh, it will avoid me causing bug. So I created an integer called required card is start with one. Uh, it means which one which card we are looking for, the card's number. We here we are gonna use a for loop to just take in all the input and push them to the mountain uh, vector I created here. I created a boolean called is possible. It initialized with true and it just means if it's possible to reach uh, is it possible to de deliver all ingredients to the lake or not? So in this for loop, it is uh, me calculating, trying to move all the ingredients to the lake. If our required card is smaller than or equal to the length of test case, it means we we have still things to move. So how we gonna move is we firstly uh, take the integer of mountain's last element it is here maybe in this case it's four after we get four out of this uh vector then it's one so it is the current card we are looking at and uh, an integer called left of branch okay so integer called left of branch and uh, if branch size is bigger than zero it means we have something on the branch, so we need to compare if the left of branch is bigger than mountain top. If the mountain top's uh, variable is bigger than the branch, it means it's impossible to, to, to do that, and we can just exit the program. And uh, if the branch size is uh, zero, it means nothing is on the branch, so feel free to uh, move anything there. If the top of mountain doesn't equal to the required card, it's a complex scenario we need to consider. But here in the else statement, if it equals to, then we're just gonna pop the mountain variable vector and uh, we increment the required card. The pop means it deletes the uh, last element of the vector. Or in Java is a realist. I don't know the particular uh, phrase in Python. So, but what if uh, the top of mountain doesn't equal to the required card? Then we need to consider if the left of branch equals to the required card. If it does, then we're just gonna pop the left of branch and uh, which is the last element of the branch. And we increment the cards a uh, required card number by one. Uh, then we continue. So the continue function is just skipping uh, all those stuff so we don't have to go over them. And uh, otherwise, the left of branch or nor the top of mountain doesn't equal to the required number. So we are trying to move this for to the branch. If the branch is empty, which is negative one, or the top of mountain is smaller than the left of branch, it means if our value on the mountain is smaller than the value on the left of branch, okay, then we're just gonna, it means it's doable, then we're just gonna pu push the branch 
uh, sorry, push the number on the mountain to the branch and uh, pop uh, back mountain, delete the, that variable on the mountain and continue. If we cannot do any of those action, it means we are stuck. And what we do when we are stuck, we we just dump it and uh, it's possible it's po it's possible gonna equals to false and then it's just gonna break the program we left the program and uh, here I initialize is possible equals to true and uh, if if in the iteration in the while loop the while loop never reached this position it means yeah it's doable to put all the ingredients to the lake then we just uh push back or add the yes string to the output vector y string. Otherwise, we're just gonna add no. It means we cannot because it's possible equals to false. And we increment the counter by one, so we can continue to the next test case. And at the end, we just output it, uh output our result per line. And return zero. Let's try to run our code. But before that, let's run the sample just to make sure. It's pretty slow to build. Okay, yes, no. Pretty good. Up, output for sample, up input. Yes, no, yeah. And copy our code to this platform. Then click the button. Yes. Okay. It seems like we are getting ACs. So I'm gonna do a little bit of conclusion for this problem. I think this problem is is pretty interesting because you need to handle uh change between vectors. You need to change around uh values or elements around the vectors of mountain top and branch. I need to compare uh which way to go if uh if you cannot put uh transfer your cart to the lake then where you should go. So in this case if we cannot uh the first thing we are looking for is can we directly put this cart to the lake? And if we couldn't then we're gonna check if can can we put the left of branch to the lake. If we cannot do that yet, neither. Then we are trying to move the card on the mountain top to the branch. So if statement uh, is particularly important here, and uh, it is important, also important to know data structure well, and uh, a little bit of mistake can just like ruin the, your algorithm. So I hope you can figure this question out by yourself and uh, code your own solution with your preferred language. So good luck. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from this video. And we have other contents on our channel about CSC exam. So thank you for watching. Bye.